back. Uh, now we entered into the third uh, phase of this uh, course, introduction to logic. So in this uh, uh, module, uh, we will be talking about some of the basic concepts of predicate logic. So, so far we have discussed, uh, uh, we started with basic concepts of logic, where we discussed about what we mean by argumentation etc. We talked about various kinds of arguments and where these arguments occur etc. Then we moved on to the logic of propositions, where we ex where we the basic units uh, of uh, our uh, logical system is uh, uh, are the propositions. A proposition is considered to be a sentence, which is which can be spoken as either true or false. So we have cleverly chosen our sentences in such a way that we can clearly draw a line between, let's say, mortal, non-mortal, etc. And all. So a sentence can be spoken as either true or false. All the sentences are represented by simply by means of uh, sentential letters that is what was the case of propositional logic. So propositional logic is also considered to be the logic of uh, the minimal uh, logic of connectives the, these connectives are uh, like this negation and R implies and if and only if. So these are the minimal kind of logics with which you can represent our knowledge. So now uh, what we are going to say in this uh, class in this lecture is, is that so we introduce propositional logic we will discuss the rational for introducing this predicate logics what are the limitations of propositional logic and then we will talk about some of the important basic constituents of the predicate logic that are predicates terms etc. So in this lecture I will be talking about these things. So why after all we need to move to predicate logic if we have if we already have propositional logics with us. So in the case of propositional logic the world is described in terms of basic units and these basic units are considered to be uh, atomic propositions. An atomic proposition is uh, considered to be a sentence which can be clearly spoken as either true or false. They are all they can also be uh, treated as declarative sentences. So if you are given any uh, sentence and all you see for example if you have a sentence like uh, it is raining you simply represent it as P or not Q etc. So a proposition is considered to be a statement that is either true or false. So the basic units in the propositional logics are sentences and these sentences are represented by sentential variables like P's, Q's, R's etc. And we have finitely many number of such kind of variables with which we can represent our propositional propositions. So the most important problems that, that are associated with the propositional logic is, is that they fail to deal with singular terms and they are in, when it comes to complex terms uh, they fail to uh, deal with the complex terms and even when it comes to the relational terms propositional logics fail. I will talk about uh, uh, these things with some examples a little bit later but when, when it comes to dealing with uh, individual terms etc propositional logics fail and other thing is, is that we have no way in propositional logic of talking about individuals members of a set which may uh, which may have uh, or fail to have certain properties etc and there is no way of quantifying over the individuals that is the main reason why we will be augmenting our proposition logic with uh, uh, two more quantifiers uh, these quantifiers are for all x and there exists some x. So there is no way in of which you can talk about uh, uh, individuals in a set or all members of an array etc. So it's all; they're all represented with only some simple kind of proposition P. So these are some of the limitations of propositional logic, and that's the reason why, in order to explain and incorporate all these things, we move on to predicate logics. So to consider a simple example, um, uh, let us consider a simple example such as the one which is in the red color, which appears on, on, in the slide. So for every number x, there is a number y such that x is less than y. For example, you have a natural numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. and all. For any number that you take into consideration, let us say you take 2, there will always be one number bigger than that one. Uh, that number is uh, smaller than the other number, its successor. 2 is always less than 3, uh, 3 is always less than 4, etc. So now, these kinds of uh, sentences which uh, we need to invoke 
some kind of relations between the individual terms x, y, etc., and all. For this, if you represent it in terms of propositional logic, it may not capture uh, the deep structure of this particular kind of sentences. So, this is simply represented as some kind of sentence P. But propositional logics are the most simplistic kind of logics uh, that are uh, in which usually propositions are represented by simple variables and all. So uh, they are uh, they are also important in the sense that in propositional logic we have some nice features such as propositional logics are complete, propositional logics are said to be consistent, and even they are considered to be sound. So these are the wonderful logical features that you will find it in the case of propositional logics. But uh, if you want to explain uh, the entire mathematical reasoning, this propositional logics fall short of many things. Mathematics requires a lot of uh, relations, etc., and all. Like in this example, uh, we need to go into the de uh, in, in depth of uh, this particular kind of sentence. Then we need to analyze this particular sentence. Then only we will come to know whether or not this particular sentence is true. Now, for example, this particular kind of sentence for every number x, there is a number y such that x is less than y, is represented as uh, uh, symbolically as this thing. For all x, there exists some y such that x is less than y. So this itself is not sufficient for the truth of this particular kind of sentence but for that we need to have some kind of domain. So we need are we talking about natural numbers, we are talking about integers, we are talking about rational numbers etc. All these things needs to be stated explicitly so that we can talk about truth of this particular kind of sentence. So we are going into the depth of this particular kind of sentence and then we are talking about we are invoking uh, relationships etc and all. So the predicates uh, usually uh, will take care of these relationships. So, so these are some of the things uh, which are uh, also considered to be the limitations of propositional logic. So the objects, objects in elementary uh, objects in propositional logics are elementary statements their properties and relations are not explicitly represented in propositional logic for example in the last sentence x is x less than y uh, that simple sentence is represented as one particular kind of thing p just one letter p so that is not sufficient in, uh, enough for us uh, especially when you are talking about uh, the relationship between two individual objects etc so objects in uh, objects in propositional logics are simply considered to be elementary statements and the statements for groups of objects especially like the one which we have discussed earlier require some kind of enumeration like for example if you want to say uh, all men are mortal you cannot simply represent this uh, sentence as just p or q etc. So we need to quantify uh, so that is for all x uh, if x is a man and x is considered to be a mortal considered to be mortal and x is a human being x is considered to be mortal so we need quantify quantifies so for all x there exists some x are considered to be the two main quantifiers that we will be using it in the predicate logic. So in a nutshell predicate logic is considered to be an extension of uh, uh, the propositional logic uh, with these two quantifiers that is for all x and there exists some x. So predicate logic is also considered to be an area of logic that deals with basically predicates which talks about the relationship between the objects. Uh, whether or not an object possesses that particular kind of property etc and all for example if you say all men are mortal mortality is uh, the property which is attributed to the human beings so mortality is considered to be the predicate so predicates uh, are given much more importance in the predicate logic so the other term for predicate logic is what we call it as first order logic first order logic means is the predicate logic plus uh, proposition logic is already they are sitting at the background. So one of the advantages of uh, first order logic or predicate logic is that it permits quantification over variables like uh, all men are mortal uh, etc uh, that permits us that uh, mortality is quantified over all the human beings. So uh, and uh, if you take if take into consideration higher order logics then it permits quantification over functions and predicates if 
the quantification happen over only variables then it is called as first order logic if the quantification happen over the functions and predicates etc and all then it is called as higher order logic this is one of the important difference between differences between uh, first order logic and the higher order logics but we will be restricting our attention on uh, quantification over variables so now let us consider uh, a simple example uh, and we will see why uh, propositional logics fail to explain uh, particular kinds of arguments like this so you need to note that uh, when we introduced Aristotelian logics that is also considered to be uh, a kind of predicate logics uh, but it has its own limitations so because not all the sentences can be put in the form of uh, the four categorical propositions and then you can talk about validity of a syllogism and then uh, Aristotelian uh, logics which are also considered as traditional logic uh, which has a limitation that it talks about uh, terms uh, a group uh, a terms which are represented to a group rather than individual terms individual beings individual things there are some of the limitations which I will talk about it in a while from now so let us consider one simple example that is this thing the famous example all men are mortal all IITK community are men so all members of IITK uh, community are considered to be mortal so these are the three sentences that we have uh, suppose if you represent it with the help of uh, propositional logic then the first one all men are mortal is represented by some kind of a letter P and all IITK community are men it simply treats, treats it as a an atomic proposition so that is represented as just simply Q and then we have the final thing that is all members of IITK community are mortal is simply represented as some kind of another atomic proposition R so from P Q R uh, R follows from P Q we can easily come up with a counter example in which P and Q can be true but R can be false so that means the argument will be invalid if you do not look into we do not go into the deep structure of these uh, sentences which are expressed as premises in the same way all circles are figures therefore whosoever draws a circle draws a figure so suppose if you uh, talk about this particular kind of argument again uh, the first sentence is represented as simply letter P and the third second sentence is simply represented as letter Q that means Q is reduced from P and you can easily come up with a counter example in which P is true and Q is false that makes this argument invalid but the actually uh, our intuitive intuitively we know that uh, this argument uh, is valid so all circles are figures and whosoever uh, draws a circle is said to have drawn a figure this is intuitively or commonsensically we can say that 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 indeed follows from this thing but if you take only propositional logic into consideration where each and every sentence is expressed as simple um, propositions like all circles are figures is represented as P and uh, whosoever draws a circle draws a figure is represented as Q then uh, P leads to Q N so we know that these sentences are uh, valid kind of sentences and all but how to know how do we show that these uh, these arguments are valid so validity here is not merely a matter of how these simple statements are related by means of some kind of propositional connectives what are the propositional connectives and R implies uh, uh, if and only if negation etc so there are many cases in which this uh, this propositional logics works and all but in many cases where uh, wherever you find these relationships etc and all this uh, we need to go into the depth of uh, the sentences and then we need to look into how these objects are related to each other and then then only we can talk about uh, truth of a particular kind of sentence so validity is not simply how these sentences are can be pieced together etc and all but it also depends upon the inner structure of the simple statements so the inner structure could be the predicates terms etc how these uh, predicates are uh, related to each other etc objects are related to each other all these things which we should know or we need to talk about truth with respect to some kind of domain etc so that means uh, the same sentence can be true with respect to natural numbers the same sentence can be false with respect to uh, integers etc so we need to talk about domain first and then we need to talk about uh, uh, some of the building blocks 
which which are related to the deep structure of this statements. So for example in this case all men are mortal Socrates is man Socrates is mortal it is simply represented as uh, first sentence is represented as P and second sentence as Q and P and Q leads to R. So you can easily come up with uh, an assignment where uh, your valuation P and valuation of Q true and valuation of R false that means you can have premises true and false conclusion that makes this argument invalid but actually this argument is a valid argument. So all men are mortal Socrates is man there is no way in which Socrates cannot be mortal at all. Socrates is mortal necessarily follows from uh, all men are mortal Socrates is a man. To analyze that this argument as being valid we need to break inside these prepositions and to capture more of the information that they convey uh, etc and we also need to analyze prepositions into predicates and arguments and also deal with uh, the quantification what is the quantification involved here all men are mortal mortality is attributed to all human beings and there is a person called Socrates he is considered to be a human being and then there exists some x such that uh, Socrates is uh, that x is considered to be mortal. So the first sentence is represented as uh, the quant, uh, uni, with the universal quantifier and the next two sentences are represented by means of uh, existential quantifiers. So we need to uh, we need to have uh, apart from the simple logical connectives and the relationship between simple relationship between the sentences we need to have quantifiers etc. So predicate logic in this sense extends the proposition logic with predicate letters P's Q's R's etc capital P capital Q R etc that are interpreted as relations on a particular kind of domain this domain can be for example if you are talking about arithmetic the domain could be natural numbers so if you are talking about uh, some Indians uh, that means all the people who reside in India etc that can be called as some kind of domain. The same thing can be false in uh, something which is true of natural numbers cannot be true of uh, all uh, in all the domains and all like the domain in which we have only integers etc. So why predicate logic the axioms and theorems of mathematics are defined on arbitrary sets such as sets of integers etc where always we invoke some kind of relationship between uh, any two uh, set of uh, statements. So we need to be able to write and manipulate logical formulas that contain relations on values from arbitrary set. Let us take one simple example that is uh, let R be an energy relation on the domain D where D is considered to be set of uh, it can be natural numbers it can be real numbers or it can be rational numbers. So that R uh, is a subset of uh, the domain D n where you consider uh, that uh, the property that you are trying to invoke is the prime number. So you are saying that x is a prime number and which is a subset of n that is a set of natural numbers if that is the case then all these things such as 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 17 etc, 13 etc all these are considered to be prime numbers for example if I take a number such as 4 then of course that belongs to n and all belongs to natural numbers but it is not considered to be uh, it does not belong to this particular kind of set so since 4 is not a uh, prime number the same uh, kind of uh, property that is prime of x um, uh, is a subset of n uh, is interpreted in this particular kind of set. that is going to be true only when it falls within this particular kind of set if it is uh, if it does not belong to this particular kind of set then that statement prime of x does not belong uh, even though it belongs to n but that sentence is going to be false. So now uh, we said in the beginning of this uh, lecture that predicate logic as uh, propositional logic fails to explain inability it shows inability to explain singular terms complex terms and also the relational terms. So what we mean by this singular terms uh, complex terms etc. So usually singular terms are words or phrases that represent individual things such as Ravi, Duster, Pen, Moon, Kanpur etc, IITK library are all individual things. So singular terms are more commonly called 
uh, as names of individual things any name of uh, anything is considered to be a singular term. So, we need to note that uh, even classical logics traditional logics such as Aristotelian logics also fails to explain this singular terms it could not think uh, it could not explain these singular terms in a proper way. So now the complex terms are like uh, the sentences of our everyday language usually contains obviously complex descriptive phrases usually to represent group of things. But in the case of traditional logic that means Aristotelian logic does not distinguish between simple general terms and complex general terms there is no way in which you can distinguish between simple general terms and complex general terms which is the distinction is very important for us to make. So with the with one small exception that uh, it, it distinguishes definitely between affirmative terms and the negative terms that uh, uh, classical uh, traditional logics succeed in making such kind of distinction but it fails to distinguish between singular terms such as uh, Ravi, Santa or Moon. Kanpur etc with uh, some kind of complex uh, phrases that we use in our day to day discourse. So there is no way in which you can uh, distinguish between singular and complex terms and there are lots of examples which one can give propositional logic uh, uh, fail to explain these particular kinds of things. Let us say for example if you say some pink birds are long legged and all birds are having wings therefore you say that some pink things that is considered to be a singular term are long legged and winged. So if you represent it in terms of uh, simple uh, propositional logic it will be like two sentences like uh, the first one is represented as P second one is represented as Q and therefore the entire statement some pink things are long legged and winged is represented as R. So that will not serve our purpose so we need to talk about uh, how these sentences are related to each other that is expressed by predicates etc and then we need to go into the deeper structure of these sentences and then then only we can talk about validity of sentences arguments like the ones which I am showing it here. So the singular terms are usually represented by a unique letters that is A, B, C, D etc and all but X, Y, Z are usually used for variables now. Suppose if you are sure that uh, the person is Ravi or Raju or Ramesh then you usually represent it as A, B, C, D etc and all. Suppose if you want to represent it as X, X is a human being that human being can be anything it can be Rahul Gandhi or it can be anyone Ravi or anyone so you represent it as variables X, Y, Z. So now we are trying to talk about some of the basic building blocks of the predicate logic. First we talked about the limitations of propositional logic there are certain things which propositional logic fails to explain. Now these things needs to be uh, we need to be in a position to explain all these things with the help of uh, uh, by augmenting the propositional logics with uh, quantifies such as uh, for all x and there exists some x. So pre predicate logics can in some in a certain sense it can also be viewed as a study of this quantifies quantifies. So now these are the single singular terms are usually represented by constants individual constants a b c etc and simple predicates such as uh, mortality etc and all in all beings are mortal mortality is considered to be the property which is attributed to all human beings that is considered to be the predicate. In any uh, simple grammatical sentence uh, we have a subject and we have a predicate so predicates uh, takes uh, as a central position in predicate logic all simple general terms are sim symbolized by unique capital letters usually we represent predicate letters as capital letters A, B, C etc and all. So we also call this as simple predicates so these terms represent the properties that a things have for example if you say all human beings are mortal mortality is a property which is attributed to the human beings so that property which is attributed to some kind of objects is called as a predicate. So there are sentences sentences are uh, in this way for example if you say Ravi is a painter this is analyzed in uh, two parts first is the name that is Ravi and next one next sentence next uh, thing which follows uh, that is is a painter. 
So the first part is a name and refers to some kind of individual thing singular term that is represented by some kind of constants such as a b c etc and the predicate is represented by some kind of capital letter. So that sentence is piece has two parts first is the name sentence that is Ravi and is a painter represents the predicate. The second part is a simple predicate that identifies some kind of characteristic the characteristic is, is that being a painter is a characteristic of that particular individual human being Ravi. So this is the way we, we represent the sentences in the predicate logic so now this sentence is represented as suppose being a painter is taken as P capital P and Ravi is considered to be a small r then it will the sentence is represented as P. Uh, subscript R. So now what are complex name sentences a basic rule of analysis for the new language that is the predicate logic is that complex expressions must be broken up into some single and simple predications each of which is applied to or attributed to the subject. So each idea gets one kind of sentence if you have a complex sentence you break it into some simple sentences and then uh, each uh, kind of property is attributed to both of the uh, subjects that, you, that occurs here for example let us consider a simple example if you say Ravi is a painter but not a magician so now you write it in this way uh, first sentence is uh, first sentence is represented as Ravi is a painter is represented as RP uh, but not uh, means uh, you have to use conjunction and it is not the case that RM where M stands for magician for example if you want to say that uh, Manmohan Singh is a, uh, a good Prime Minister of India etc. So now let us say uh, uh, the first sentence S, S stands for uh, Manmohan Singh so uh, now you need to represent it in this uh, way uh, there are two things which are uh, there here two things which you can attribute to Manmohan Singh. In this case sneaky is one property which can be attributed to Manmohan Singh and the Prime Minister of India can also be attributed to him. So that is the reason why we wrote it as uh, actually it should be the other way around uh, S M and S P uh, where P stands for Prime Ministership and M stands for Manmohan Singh here. So uh, S M and P M. That's what you can represent it. You can represent this particular sentence in this way. So what the idea here is is that if you have a complex sentence, uh, it it, has, it needs to be broken into simple sentences, and then we need to represent uh, these sentences uh, in a particular kind of order. So now uh, let us uh, try to discuss. Uh, in the predicate logics, we begin with uh, the syntax of uh, uh, predicate logic. It tells us what kind of things that we are using it in our in our language of predicate logic and then we move on to semantics of predicate logic where we discuss about what do you mean by saying that a particular sentence in a predicate logic is considered to be true or false that is what we discuss about it and then we will talk about some of the important decision procedure methods with which you can check the validity of a given formula that exists in a given proposition predicate logics. And then in that we will discuss at least one or three important methods to start with we will we'll talk about simple semantic tableaux method and then we also talk about resolution refutation method and then in natural deduction in the context of predicate logic etc. Then there is another method with which you can talk about validity of a given formula that is reducing the given predicate logic formula into its corresponding normal form so instead of talking about uh, conjunctive and disjunctive normal forms here we talk about prenex normal forms so if you can reduce uh, any given formula into prenex normal forms then you can talk about validity of a given formula that exists in the predicate logic and then we will talk uh, then we move on and we we'll talk about uh, uh, identity relations etc and all and we'll talk about something about definite descriptions etc so these are the things which are there in the agenda of this predicate logics to start with 
we need to have some kind of language to begin with. So the language of predicate logic uh, consists of these things. It's not just uh, sentences and uh, the sentences are combined together with the help of logical connectives and then form complex kind of sentences as is the case of uh, propositional logic. But here uh, we need to go into the deeper structure of uh, the sentences. So uh, in your syntax the language of your predicate logic we have individual constants they refer to some kind of names or individual things etc chair table etc and all you are referring to that particular kind of table the singular kind of things they refer to they are referred by individual constants a b c can be ravi ramu raju etc and all if you are talking about human beings or if it is talking if you are talking about some table means you are talking about a specific table or you are talking about some kind of monkey or table or any other thing they are talking about a specific kind of monkey. So now we have individual variables for example if you want to say we do not know clearly who that person is suppose if any property is attributed to some kind of human beings let us say if you want to refer to some IITK students are very bright. So the brightness is attributed to some kind of human beings so that some can involve it can be many uh, there may be at least one or it can be a num, uh, few number of people and all. so we don't we are not sure uh, who, who they are exactly so we represent it as some kind of variable x x can be anything it can be this student or that student etc who all come under the category of bright students and then we have predicate uh, letters such as p q r they refer uh, in general usually we represent this uh, predicate letters by capital letters P Q R S etc. So in addition to that we have quantifiers so there are usually two quantifiers that are used one is the universal quantifier if you are referring to the entire class etc group then you require universal quantifier like in the case of all human beings are mortal mortality is attributed to the whole set of class that class of human beings an existential quantifier is represented as simply x. there exists some x and uh, as usual we have these uh, connectives which are already there in the case of propositional logic so we need to note that we are just augmenting the propositional logic with two more uh, uh, usually with the quantifiers and all so that is uh, in order to express this quantifiers and all we need to have all these predicates uh, terms etc and all so Predicate logics are uh, in a way extension of the pre proposition logics in a sense that you are augmenting this proposition logics with two quantifiers that are there for all x and there exists some x. So these are the things that, that are there in our language and we have some functional symbols f g h etc and all if it is a 0 array kind of thing if it is usually represented as 0 g 0 etc and all. So now here uh, it is uh, clear that we do not have any propositional kind of uh, letters that exist here in the predicate logic because 0 array symbols are usually uh, in this in, in, in the predicate logics are treated as constants like a b c etc and all. So we do not have individual let, uh, letters such as p q s r etc and all as is the case of propositional logic because they are all 0 array symbols but 0 array symbols are here represented as constants but we have uh, uh, functional symbols with arity at least 1 2 2 n and all so we do not have propositional letters that means 0 because propositional letters are usually represented as 0 array predicates arity is 0 so it is in that sense we do not require this propositional letters so we just simply use uh, if there are zero array kind of uh, symbols which exist they, they are simply treated as constants and as usual we need to have this punctuation marks comma bracket square brackets etc to uh, to avoid uh, dis uh, to avoid ambiguities in the well formed formulas so the syntax of predicate logic to into con in continuation with that we so we use individual constants to formalize names such as a b c etc and all and individual variables like x y z to refer to individual variable words 
like this man, that man, etc. And all we are not saying which man actually he is. So, and the predicate symbol variables such as some kind of properties which the object is the object possesses, which are considered to be predicate expressions. And we use two quantifiers for all x, and there exists some x to formalize the quantification expresses expressions. Now, just as in the case of propositional logic. Um, we can construct uh, some kind of uh, well formed formulas within the predicate logic PL stands for predicate logic uh, just as in the case of propositional logic not any kind of string will combine and form a formula well formed formula in the propositional logic just like that. So here also the formulas combine in certain way and then form some kind of well formed formulas and you need to note that uh, just like in the case of propositional logic whatever formula that you come up with that is not considered to be a tautology or valid formula. So there can be infinitely many strings that you can generate by using uh, the symbols that occurs in that particular kind of language with the help of logical connectives but not all are considered to be valid formulas just like that even in the predicate logic also uh, you can generate some well formed formulas but not all generated well formed formulas are considered to be valid formulas valid formula is also considered to be tautology. So we need to have some kind of definition with which you can formulate you can form these well formed formulas in the predicate logic. So, uh, so these are some of the important uh, rules that one employs in finding out whether a given formula is a well formed formula or not. So if A is an NRE predicate letter in the vocabulary of your predicate logic and each of the terms t1 to t2 to tn is a constant or that means a b c or it can be a variable it, it can be like p x or it can be p c etc. So where p is considered to be a property which is attributed to c or even to individual variable like x then a uh, t1 to tn is considered to be a formula of L. So that means uh, in that sense uh, it simply says that uh, we have a predicate P let us say these are all predicates P Q R etc and then we have so these are uh, individual uh, constants and all and then there are some variables which refer, refers to this man that man etc. So now it says that simply if you write like this that is considered to be a well formed formula P A or if you simply write this thing that is also considered to be a well formed formula. So now what we have in our language are all these things so this represents predicates it represents individual constants referring to individual things and this refers to individual variables and then we have these two things there exists some x for all x and then as usual as in the case of propositional logic we have all these connectives already. So this is implication by implication conjunction and disjunction this is a set of logical connectives which are already there. So now if you simply write like this P A that is considered to be a well formed formula or if you can even write P X that is what the rule number 1 tells us. So now the second rule is this that if P is considered to be a well formed formula and not P is also considered to be well formed formula as is the case of propositional logic the only thing which is extra is the first one. So this is what one we can write it in this particular kind of way this is a unary kind of predicate suppose if you want to write this way so if you write in this way x is related to y in a certain way some property is attributed to x and y where x and y are related in certain kind of way. So these are binary predicates and all so the same thing which can be written in this particular kind of thing some test books it can be it is written in this particular kind of sense this x y is in some kind of order x is related to y in a certain way and they have the property p. So it can be like for example there are two objects such as x and y for example x is considered to be father of y so then you put like this you write in this way so this means there is some kind of order which is there in this one 
x is considered to be father of y. So this is uh, different from f, y, and x. So now we need to replace this with the uh, son of uh, this thing. You know. So f of x y, if you change the order, that is not equivalent to its corresponding form. So there is some kind of order which is there in this one. So here in this formula, this can be even written as f x and y. In some test books, they prefer to write it in this way x y and this is a predicate and these are individual variables this is also considered to be a well formed formula in some other test books you will find it in this way f x followed by y for example if you want to invoke this particular kind of relation that is the relationship between x and y is father being a father so that comes first and then followed by that this particular kind of order so this should be read as x is a father of y so x is a father of y suppose if you this is different from y and x x is father of y does not mean that y is a father of x and y. so these two are different kind of formulas. So as in the case of uh, propositional logics uh, we have suppose if uh, any variable uh, anything is considered to be well formed formula not p is also considered to be well formed formula and p and q are well formed formulas then the conjunction disjunction uh, implication and by implication they are all binary connectives uh, if you can combine with uh, any one of these uh, individual variables with these things that is also considered to be a well formed formula that means all the well formed formulas of propositional logic are already retained in the predicate logic it is in that sense predicate logic is considered to be an extension of propositional logic. So the fourth rule is, is that if phi is a well formed formula in L and x is a variable then these are the two other things which we have so they are like this so the two extra things that you will find it in the propositional logics is this thing. suppose if anything like phi is a formula well formed formula just a constant or a simple individual variable is also considered to be well formed form and these two combined and then form another kind of well formed formula so now in addition to that if phi is also already considered to be a well formed formula then this is also well formed formula but if you write like this then this is not a well formed formula so we define it in such a way that first there is a quantifier followed by that there is a sentence in the same way if something phi is a well formed formula even there exists some x such that phi is also well formed formula. So these are the additional things which you will find it in the case of uh, uh, predicate logic. So now finally uh, only which uh, that which can be generated by using one of these uh, four things is considered to be a well formed formula you should not be in a position to derive any other kind of thing apart from these particular kinds of rules. So, so this, this is what we mean by uh, well formed formulas. Uh, in the case of predicate logic the only thing which extra thing which you will find it here is this particular kind of thing so that is uh, for phi is a well formed formula then for all x phi is also considered to be well formed formula and uh, phi is a well formed formula there exists some x phi is also considered to be a well formed formula. Uh, so now uh, let us talk something about some of the basic building blocks of uh, predicate logic and with this I uh, will uh, end this uh, particular kind of lecture. So just like in the case of propositional logic we have uh, the basic building blocks for the propositional logics are the propositions the propositions are the sentences which can be clearly spoken as either true or false but in the case of predicate logic there are uh, there are objects that means the things in the world such as duster table chase etc and all individual things I can give these names such as umbrella person John Ravi earth etc and all individual things so they are considered to be the building blocks of predicate logic and then in addition to that we have relations such as properties relations between objects such as for example Ravi is related to Sita in such a way that uh, Sita is considered to be uh, wife of Ravi the other way around you should write it here and we also have functions such as uh, functions talks about types of relation that maps an, in, an input into some kind of value. 
So now these are some of the building blocks uh, we just now we talked about that particular kind of thing to start with since the predicate logic uh, is all about the study of predicates. So predicates are uh, occupies the central position here. So with this I will end this uh, lecture so I will talk some I will talk something about the predicates. So usually we, we discuss uh, we represent these uh, predicates uh, with uh, capital letters uh, and the predicate letter will usually be associated with list of at least one particular kind of variable for example if there is only one variable here it is called as a unary predicate and if you have two letters x and y it is a binary predicate and if you have three letters such as x y z for example uh, we will talk about the example in a while from now for example if you say uh, 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 Ravi is a bright student so you will simply write it as B R so where B is considered to be a predicate that is being bright is considered to be a predicate and then the constant that is uh, here we are referring to R so that is why it is represented as B R uh, that is considered to be unary predicate. For example if you want to invoke relation between x and y on like uh, x is a wife of uh, y then you write w x y w is uh, w stands for being wife of someone and you need to follow some kind of order so that is a binary predicate suppose if you are, if you are uh, trying to talk about uh, the heights of three people and all x y z suppose x is less than y uh, less height uh, X, x height is less than y or y's height is less than z etc and all. So you need to require a relationship between the three people so that is considered to be a tertiary predicate and all. So like this based on the number of variables we have unary binary and tertiary kind of or maybe unary kind of predicates. So a predicate is usually used to represent property of its variable that is for example if you say all men are mortal mortality is a predicate which is attributed to the variable that is all human beings uh, or a relationship between its variables like for example x is uh, wife of uh, uh, y etc. So now we have uh, the connectives uh, and r implies uh, if and only if etc and these are same connectives that are used in the propositional uh, calculus and in addition to that we have lx lx x etc they are all lx is considered to be uh, one place predicates because x is related to x only yeah. lx y is considered to be a two place predicate and if you want to uh, invoke the relationship between three group uh, three people for example then you need quite three place predicates. So in this uh, lecture we just introduced uh, uh, some of the limitations of uh, propositional logic so we discussed that uh, not all the things can be represented in terms of simple relationship between the sentences that is what was done in the case of propositional logic although the propositional logics were considered to be sound complete uh, and consistent etc wonderful features are there in that one but that is not sufficient enough to capture many parts of your mathematical reason. So the basically our goal was to capture the mathematical reasoning with the help of uh, uh, this first order logic first order logic I mean uh, it is a uh, uh, it is a combination of proposition logic and the predicate logic in this class we peripherally we discussed about some of the important building blocks of the, pre the predicate logics. So uh, in the next class I will be talking about uh, what exactly we mean by this predicates terms objects uh, the functions etc and all. So when I talk in greater detail about the syntax of uh, pre predicate logics I will deal with uh, some of these important concepts are the basic building blocks of predicate logic then we will move on to when do we say that a given sentence is true or given sentence is false etc. So then we will continue with this thing in the next class.